Okay, we did 1 through 17 in class. Uh, I didn't do 18, 19, 20, 21. We're looking for the positive value for 18 of uh, 0 to 10. And 0 to 10 is right here. Take the absolute, absolute value of that area. The absolute value of that area is the same as the original. No issues there. Number 19 is asking for all the areas to just make them positive. And what do I mean? If we look at all these areas over here, all the blue are the negatives, so we subtracted those. Okay, in this case, what it's asking us to do is add those in, because we want just positive areas. What is the total area? Whether it's negative or positive, we don't care. We just want to add up all the areas and make them all positive. So we're looking for an interval, negative, negative 40, negative 3. There it is, negative 40, negative 3. So we have 5. Sorry, we have 0. 0.5. We're going to also add from negative 3 to the graph, negative 3 to 0. And there it is, add 11. Uh, zero to zero to three, and we have four. Four. We have four. Three to six. We're gonna add one point five. And then six to ten. And that gives us a uh, oh, sorry, yeah, six to ten. Not that one, sorry. That one's located right here. Okay. Plus two five. And we add them all together. All right, for 18, uh, we're looking for the, zero, the interval from 0 to 10. We already found it. Here is 0 to 10. We just need to find the absolute value of that. And it's actually the same answer. Absolute value of 2.5 plus 2 pi is 2.5 plus 2 pi. Number 9 is asking for the positive areas between 0 and 10. What we found before or previously is we added these areas. We subtracted that area. And we added this area. Okay. For uh, number 19, it's actually asking you to add all the areas, regardless of whether or not they're positive or negative. Uh, take the absolute value of this area, making it positive. <clears throat> so you're going to add all three areas, uh, making all the areas positive. And uh, between 0 and 10, and we know from 0 to 3, it's 4. We know from 3 to 6, is 1.5. Remember, we're taking the absolute value of one point, negative one point five, which is one point five, and then from six to ten, which is two pi. And adding them up together, you end up with five point five plus two pi. Twenty is asking for the area of all the whole interval, the whole graph, and just taking the positive of it. And so, since the original from negative four to ten was already positive, right here. Taking the absolute value doesn't change the answer. It's just the same answer. And number two is asking for you to make all the areas positive again, but from negative 4 to 10. The whole graph from negative 4 to 10. Make all the areas positive, add them up together, multiply them by 2. That's the first thing it's asking for. And then keep in mind that the, uh, the interval it's asking for, the smaller numbers on top, making the whole thing negative once you take the absolute value everything, and then multiply them by 2. Then you multiply uh, everything times uh, a negative 1. So once again, we're looking for this area. We're going to add the positive of this area, positive of this area, and the positive of all the areas for the whole graph. So from negative 4 to negative 3 is negative 0.5, but we want the positive. So we got 0.5, and then from negative 3 to 0, we have 11. Okay, we figured the rest out on number 19. Plus 5.5 plus 2 pi. Adding them up all together. So 17 plus 2 pi. And then we got to multiply all that times 2, giving us 34 plus 4 pi. And now again, because this interval is this, with the smaller number on top, that makes everything that we just did negative, giving us negative 34 minus 4 pi.
Okay, we're given three functions when integrals, and then we're given the we're given the interval, and we're giving what those functions are equal with that interval, the area under those functions. You know, these are pretty straightforward. We have an, what does a what is the integral between five and two for uh, f of x is eighteen. The integral of g of x taking the same interval is five, and so we have twenty three. So it's pretty straightforward. F of x again, we have 18 plus 5 minus a negative 11, and giving us 34. 24. 24, we're now asked to multiply 4 times g of x and g of x. Within that interval is 5. However, keep in mind, notice that we have those two that are reversed, so it makes it a negative 5. So this gives us negative, uh, positive 20, sorry, negative 20. Okay. 25 is a little tricky. Now, what we have here is, is the height. Here's the height. Here's the base. Okay, let me show the work down here so that there's more space. We have base times Height. We know the base is from 5 to negative 2, so the base equals 7 times h. And what we're given here is that it equals 5. The area for g of x equals 5. This also tells us that our h in the original g of x right here, okay, equals 5 over 7. What we need to do, this is telling us to add 2 to the height. So we have to add 14 over 7. This equals 2. Oh, oops, sorry. 14 over 7 equals 2. And this gives us 19 over 7. So here's our height. g of x plus 2 is 19 over 7. Now what happens when we multiply times the base? Our base is 7. Okay, same thing as 7 over 1. That answer gives us 19. So for 26, again, we have base times height. We're concerned with f of x. Let's find out what the original height is. Our base times height, our base is 7. Okay, what was our height? Whatever our h was, that ended up equaling 18 originally. So our height is 18 over 7. It's asking us to subtract 6 from our height. So what we want to do is subtract 6 times 7, 42 over 7, ending up with negative 24 over 7. So now we know our height when we add 6, when we subtract 6 from it. Now we need to multiply it times our base, which is 5 minus negative 2. Negative twenty-four. All right. For twenty-seven, we have to just recognize what this is actually doing to the function. Okay. This portion right here is saying we're shifting the whole function to the right, so we're not even really changing anything. We're shifting everything over to the right two spaces, and this is what we call a horizontal shift. And which is why instead of five, you see seven. Instead of a negative two, you see two. So. This does nothing to the area of the function itself, and h of x remains, uh, the area underneath h of x remains 11. Same thing for number 3. What you'll notice is that this has been shifted, the whole graph has been shifted from uh, to the left negative 2 spaces, which is why instead of a 5, you see a 3 at the top, and then instead of a negative 2, you see a negative 4. It does nothing to the, to the area. So the area is the same. Everything just shifts over to the left two spaces. And so the g of x remains the same, unaffected. So for 29, let's first look at the interval. We have the interval from 5 to 8 for f of x. What we know for f of x is the interval from negative 2 to 5 and from negative 2 to 8. Okay. So from negative 2 to 5, and from negative 2 to 8. So all we have to do is subtract whatever the area is from negative 2 to 8. 
uh, negative 2 of 8, we subtract uh, from 5 to negative 2, and you get the remaining portion. And so in essence, what this is actually telling us to do, and I'll write the whole thing out here, 5. equals everything from negative 2 to 8, which we're given. I'm sorry, from 8 to negative 2. Same thing. And subtracting the smaller portion. Okay, so if you see basically what you're doing is subtracting the zero minus a two. Finally thirty. Base. Yeah, good. We have eight minus one, which is seven. Now just keep in mind, anytime we change anything inside the function, we're sh we're just shifting it. Notice how the function was shifted 3 to the right, okay? and notice how the intervals were also switched 3 to the right. So everything moved together, not changing the area whatsoever. Okay, so it, we just treat this as if it just said f of x from negative 2 to 5. It's the same thing. Okay, so again, we have our height, we have our base, and okay, there's our base, all this. Right here is our height. In the original function, our base was 7. So h times 7 in our original function. When we multiplied them, it gave us an answer of 18. So again, our height equals 18 over 7. And what it wants us to do right here is add 3 to our height. So 21 over 7 equals 3, giving us 39 over 7. Now we want to multiply it times dx, which is our interval, which is 7. So our answer is 39. Right, you go home like that and have it ready at the beginning of class. <laughs>